Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. In our show this time, we'll take the time to review the most recent top five Think Tech talk shows and the staff pick. We'll check out the elements of the best of the best and get a handle on the public issues and the guests involved. ThinkTech produces more than 30 talk shows every week in our downtown high-tech green screen studio. Here's a list of all our incredible ThinkTech talk shows and hosts. As you can see, they're very diverse, and their coverage is also kaleidoscopically diverse, showing you things you might never have otherwise known. Every week, ThinkTech chooses its top five ThinkTech talk shows from the week before based on the number of views each of them has had on the internet. For this past week, the winning shows were as follows. Number one, from the series Young Talents Making Way, hosted by Andrea Gabrielli, it's called Mixing and Unmixing Stars, exploring the physics of time reversal, with guests Aidan Chun and Kimberly Cothen Butel. It's on our Young Talents Making Way playlist. simulations did you run? How many times the two galaxies collided? Oh, I think if we take a look at the results. Yeah, let's have a look. Okay, so here, so we defined the, these sets of experiments uh, with uh, um, single precisions as well as double precision experiments. Yes, correct. So here we're looking at results from the single precision. What did you find about this? So um, for single precision, you could see that uh, by the time you wait 20 time units, which are just arbitrary, yeah. you could think of them almost as is the amount of time for the sun to orbit around the core of the Milky Way. Yeah, that's right, because um, the question I was going to ask you is, uh, simulations are run basically uh, on a computer, so they go fast, I suppose. Yes. But in, in the real universe, uh, a galaxy, two galaxies to collide, it takes a, a long time. How millions long does it years. take? Millions of years. Yes. Millions of years. And um, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is actually going, is, is set on a collision yes. route with the Andromeda galaxy, isn't it? Yes. And uh, if you don't want it to be that way, if you figure out how to reverse every star, every atom within the galactic group, Maybe you could pull it off. <laughs> That's fascinating. But how could you? Do you have any ideas how you could actually do this? Or it, I have it, no answers. It, to that. <laughs> it, it, I guess it might deal more with quantum mechanics and yeah. atoms as well. Yeah, there yeah. are some studies from physicists in the world who are trying to work with yeah. uh, quantums and other tiny particles. I think. Um, there's even like research with uh, like protons for X-rays. Yeah. And then you know how they have their spin. Yeah, yeah. They actually like reverse it. And I guess to a certain degree, that's like reversing their motion. Wow. Here we're talking about really advanced physics. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so what about your? Um, so you carried out the simulations with single and double precisions as part of this uh, computer work. What yep. about the double? Maybe let's see our next slide so we can see. Yeah. Okay. So what's the difference between the single and the double precision in these experiments? Well, the double precision you can actually wait way longer than uh, the single precision, as you can see with you know more rows of data. Number two. From the series Think Tech Asia, hosted by Jay Fidel, it's called Playing the Trump Card, Banning Chinese Technology Investments in the U.S., with guest Russell Liu. It's on our Think Tech Asia playlist. He wants to stop investment by China. I guess that includes everybody in China, every man, woman, child, and, and, and well, everybody in China from investing in American technology. What, what is that well, about? I, I think we have to look at what he's, what and he's how doing. how you do that. I think we have to look in a broader picture of what he's doing because when he says we're going to stop Chinese investments coming to the U.S. technology, well, you have many companies who are Chinese that will do maybe joint research centers with American companies. And we learn from them just as much as they learn from us. And again, with that, remember, it, it builds a safer world because then, and to some extent, we and them, you know, I won't say them, but other people around the world, we, we, I certainly we share agree. benefits. I certainly agree, but how does investment by China into the United States, into 
American tech companies hurt us. What is Trump concerned about? What is the problem here that he's trying to solve by stopping it? Uh, isn't it a good thing to have foreign investment, offshore investment coming into your jurisdiction? Isn't that what everybody likes? They want that. They go out worldwide and, and scour every every place on earth to find foreign investment. Now he says he don't, I don't understand. Well, you know, Jay, what I'm, what I'm more troubled about, and uh, to be honest with you, it's not only just the proposed ban on, on foreign investment from China, but it means this. Um, of the last show we talked about, there's some very, very, very concerning signals that we, we see, we have the head of the FBI saying that the Chinese people are a threat to our society. And so the, the, the one of the other proposal is to to now to restrict the Chinese students from coming to the U.S. to our colleges. And, um, you know, there are a lot of Chinese students who come to the U.S. to do their Ph.D. work or their master's work. And so uh, that's part of it, because a lot of them are in the area of technology uh, doing master's work. And so there's a Chinophobia. There's a Chinophobia that everything, not only just technology, but education. We're going to stop the flow. It's, it's scary. Now, he, he's also, does he also want to stop the flow of talent? from China into the United States? Yes, that's what they're looking for. part of the part, same initiative? That's part of the same initiative to, to, to restrict the Chinese students from coming Just to the U.S. isolate, keep them away, keep them out. Are we going back to like... Out of our economy, out of our schools, all that. It's, it's almost like the uh, 1950s the, the scare, you know, the Red Scare. We're going to keep everybody out, you know? I don't know what this is going to accomplish, you know, because it's a global world, no matter what happens, Jay. Number three, from the series Navigating the Journey, hosted by Marsha Joyner. It's called Kauai After the Historic Storm with guest Kauai Mayor Bernard Carvalho. It's on our Navigating the Journey playlist. Since Saturday, uh, some have chosen to remain uh, in this area and others, of course, have made the decision to evacuate. So we're trying to encourage everybody to, if they can, to evacuate the area uh, and get to a safer place for now until we can do a better assessment of the entire area. Um, so we've been working closely on that. There are multi-agency relief efforts from our visitors and, and, and our, our uh, National Guard, like I said, the American Red Cross. We have a solid team here at the EOC trying their very best to uh, address the entire situation. Now, uh, our last conversation with you, you told us about the fact that you had all of this in place, ready just in case, because you had learned so much from the last two um, Hurricanes. You know, right. But unlike the hurricane, we we have it's almost a little different, well, majorly different kind of disaster. So yes, we have a checklist in place, if you will. We know what we need to do. We've gone through something like this. We assembled the team. We've done numerous mock type of uh, trainings prior to this with our Kima team, which is a Kauai emergency management team that has been doing. So you know, now it's a real situation. And I'm so happy with the support from the federal, state, and county levels of people wanting to help support. We've got people in here from Maui, from Oahu, different members helping alleviate or, or, or transition some of our team members to stay here 24 hours sometime overnight, you know, for the next day as we transition in the mornings at 6 o'clock. And so we're asking for support from our neighboring islands as well, from our political um, uh, leaders to help support what we can in relief efforts or funding. So there's a lot of stuff happening, but the main part right now is to address an isolated area, boots on the ground, do an assessment of all the damages in other areas, and then come up with a checklist so we can submit that for relief efforts and support. Number four from the series Research in Manoa, hosted by Jay Fidel. It's called Preparing for the 2018 Hurricane Season with guest Dennis Wong. It's on our Research in Manoa playlist. We're just
just talked about a double wall house, but this is a single wall house. And uh -huh. these are the houses that are the oldest ones in Hawaii, okay? okay. And the most vulnerable to uh, hurricane impact. So you could see on the picture on the upper left, um, that's a house that's been retrofitted. On the right, a lot of Single wall houses are on co called what's on post and pier structures. They're very weak from a hurricane, force winds, or an earthquake because they don't they don't sit on. Um, they're not attached or just sit on the termite pan by friction. But in this picture, we actually retrofitted that to make the connection stronger. I see. And, and is this one of these retrofitted? Yes. One more picture, I guess, and that should do. Let me see, can we go to the, okay, there, there we, we go. go. So here we go, so those are the individual posts and piers. This single wall house in Pearl City is actually, each post has been retrofitted to tie down the post to the concrete block. And it's very easy, you could come back to that. It's very easy to uh, put these posts in and then you put the hole down there, and with this screw, you just drill a hole. If this is a 5 8 inch screw, you drill a 5 8 inch hole into the concrete, and you use an impact driver. It goes right in, and it holds okay. the post. And, of course, there's no guarantees that any of this will prevent all of the damage. Right. But at least in terms of wind damage and knowing what the drainage system is around the house as well, presumably, is really important. Right, right, yeah. yes. So um, this is one of the main activities that Sea Grant does, as I understand it, that you try and inform the general public. What would an interested layperson how would they learn more about this? You've got the, the manual. How do they even get a copy of this manual? Okay, well, um, they could best to uh, just Google University of Hawaii Sea Grant, and they'll get to their uh, to their website, and their um, their they have a, a publication library. And this is the Hawaii Sea Grant College Program. Yes. Number five from the series The Cyber Underground. Hosted by Rochelle Mansalugan, it's called How to Start a Career in Cybersecurity, Part 2, with guest Nathaniel Weeks. It's on our Cyber Underground playlist. So you and I have done a little bit of that when we were at KCC, right. when we did um, pen testing for companies. Yes. It was really, you know more like email phishing mm -hmm. and uh, testing the employees to see if they were following best practices yeah. with their emails. Uh, because that's what the way so many pe companies get hacked is, is mm -hmm. through email. Uh, so I did that. I, I've done an internship with High Tech Hui, with uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and they're all great people. And then, like I said, now I'm with the uh, Cybersecurity Coordination Center at West Oahu, and I have another internship lined up that I'm going to be starting soon. And all right. Yeah, I'm super excited about all of this. There's, there's so many opportunities out there. Not, yes. Um, so if you show that you're you know, aggressive about these degrees, about these certifications, about uh, your career, there's so many doors that will mm -hmm. open up. You have to pick and choose. And so I've, I've found myself saying no a lot right. more than saying yes to I the have office. to learn how to sit and do that, and Nathaniel always, because I have a lot on my plate, and I say yes to everything for every opportunity, but... <laughs> right, we've taken different <laughs> yes, strategies on it. Routes, so we'll talk about that a little bit later, my, the routes that I did as well. But. <clears throat> what, can you talk a little bit more what you actually do at the at Cyber Center? Do you... Sure, so... Like a blog, or...? Um, so there is... Um, some something like a blog mm -hmm. that we maintain there. Um, so we have the vulnerability research, okay. we have best practices, we have global, and we have forensics. And so those people all invest a lot of time in uh, their area of expertise, and they um, they develop these uh, great articles based on open source intelligence. Now I've I've written a few myself, but I am I spend more time. Uh, working with hardware mm -hmm. and uh, developing labs for students. Right. And, and in fact, I actually taught a class at uh, West Oahu. We also have a staff pick. This time, it's from the series The Global Report by Lily Ong. It's called What America May Look Like to Overseas Americans with guest Glenn Van Zupen. 
It's on our Global Report playlist. Um, but this one particular driver, um, he had been a businessman for many years. He lost his job, so he started driving a taxi. Very smart, very educated. And he just, um, after saying hello and, you know, where you want to go and all that, he looked in the mirror and said, oh, where are you from? I said, oh, the U.S. He goes, um, he goes, can I ask you a question? And he looks in the mirror at me, right? So I'm looking at him in the mirror. He goes, what happened to your country? Like, just like that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. That just, you know, it was almost like a knife, mm -hmm. you know. No buffer, just no just buffer. straight up. What, you know, what happened? What is happening with your country? What is going on? And while I think, you know, I, I appreciate that there's a large, you know, make America great again um, uh, contingency in the U.S. You know, Singaporeans here, when they see that, they they really wonder, and and some of the issues around it, they really wonder what has happened to U.S. ideals. Now, don't forget, I mean, Americans have been coming to Singapore since probably about the 1840s or 1850s. U.S. warships called on Singapore in the mid-1800s, right? So we have a long, our whaling ships came from the east coast of the U.S. Uh, and spent time here on their way, um, you know, uh, uh, looking for whales around, trade, all that sort of stuff. Um, the first ice in Singapore came from lakes in New Hampshire and Maine, oh. and it was put in the bottom of the clipper ships, the sailing ships, um, and then packed with sawdust and sailed all the way around South America into Singapore. You know, two, three months later, the ship arrived, and that was the first ice that came wow. to Singapore. So, you know, we have a hugely um, long and deep connection uh, to Singapore. So when Singaporeans see things happen, you know, they, they know America, they know Americans. Many of them have studied there, have friends there, you know, maybe a, a partner, a spouse from there. So they really want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, where, why have we gotten to this place? You can always find the links to these shows in our daily email advisories. If you don't already get our daily email advisories, you can sign up to get them on thinktechhawaii.com. These are only samplings from the top five and the staff pick from across our 30 plus weekly talk shows. There are, of course, many more. To see these shows in their entirety, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Great diversity, great community, great content at ThinkTech. And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you miss a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. 
and we're always looking for new shows. Most recently, we've added Outside the Lines, hosted by Rusty Kamori, which covers leadership issues and advice in Hawaii. It plays at 10 a.m. Mondays, and you can find the episodes on the Outside the Lines playlist. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube, or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. And now, here's this week's Think Tech commentary. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. And although I'm an elected public official, the views in this commentary are purely my own and do not reflect those of any organization or agency. In theory, the legislative session is a time when complex issues can be hashed out in full view of the public. Citizens are free to testify and offer feedback to legislators about proposed bills. Legislators can research the complex variables involved and debate the bill's possible impact. Hearings are held, compromises are found. In theory, the process helps protect us all from hastily composed legislation with secret agendas and unintended consequences. Now, all of that is in theory, but then comes the end of the session when that care, compromise, and concern are occasionally thrown out the window. Now, if you ever doubted that the proverbial smoke-filled room still exists, you only need to look at how transparency goes by the wayside at the end of the session. Consider the budget bill. We know that Governor David Ige asked for an extra $50 million to help meet payments for the state's unfunded liabilities. What was less clear until recently is that the state is also sitting on a multi-year sur surplus. What's completely unclear is how legislators are planning to spend that surplus. Now, part of the issue is that it's an unofficial surplus because it wasn't submitted as part of the governor's financial plan. But let's not get mired by the semantics of bureaucracy. The money is either there or it's not. If it is, what's the legislature planning to do with it? The Hawaii Constitution says excess revenues can only be given back as a tax refund credit or deposited into an emergency fund or used to pay down state obligations. You'd think that the question of how to allocate the unofficial surplus would be a public matter, but it is surprisingly difficult for the public to get any information about budget proceedings at this stage. They are neither broadcast nor recorded, and the process itself is opaque. In essence, the way the public learns what is in the budget bill is for the legislature to pass it and then read it. Now, even worse is the notorious practice of gut and replace. Every year, legislators take advantage of a vaguely titled bill to swap out its contents with an entirely different measure they want to see advance. Thus, a bill that has passed one house, going through debate and public testimony, can end up being amended in the other house until it's an entirely different bill. That amended bill now moves along to conference committee and passage, immune from the need for more hearings or public comment at all. And gut and replace isn't unusual. It can happen more than a dozen times every session. For example, take this year. HB 1985 began as a bill about zoning, land use, and affordable housing. Then it went to the Senate, where it was transformed into a bill about the Mauna Kea Management Authority. Now, HB 2304 started as a bill about industrial hemp. Now it's an appropriation for capital improvements in East Maui. Take HB 2471. It received attention as a proposal to regulate video games. Then it became a licensing bill about small dollar lenders, which are payday loans. <laughs> the, the practice of gut and replace is a repudiation of transparency and citizen involvement. It allows legislators to advance pet projects and dead bills without subjecting them to fair scrutiny or the full legislative process. And yet it's so common that the League of Women Voters and Common Cause Hawaii created what we call the Rusty Scalpel Award for the bill that makes the greatest leap in subject without constitutionally required legislative review. In 2017, the award went to a bill that started as a lower income tax rate bill for the poor and turned into a $1 million appropriation for the Hawaii Tourism Authority. The real damage here isn't to the budget or Hawaii's tax system, though they're questionably suffering as well, 
The larger question is how these practices destroy public trust in government. The purpose of transparency and legislative review is to promote an active and educated citizenry. By shutting the public out of the process through secretive budget hearings and gut and replace tactics, the legislature fosters the notion that they don't need to play by the rules. This in turn leads to greater public frustration and distrust of government. What we need is a show of integrity and restraint from our policymakers. Refrain from indulging in the practice of gut and replace. Demand more transparency in the legislative process. Consider passing rules that would prevent gut and replace tactics. This isn't just about getting more sunlight in those smoke-filled rooms. It's about protecting the democratic process. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. The Atherton Family Foundation, Castle and Cook, Hawaii. The Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education. Collateral Analytics. The Cook Foundation. The Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners. Hawaii Energy. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, Hawaiian Electric Companies, the High Tech Development Corporation, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Integrated Security Technologies, Kamehameha Schools, Dwayne Carisu, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sidney Stern Memorial Trust, the Volo Foundation, Eureka J. Sugimura. Okay, Cynthia, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Cynthia does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. Aloha, everyone.